He is risen from Tony's bad book straight to Capo. Ralphie is back in business. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment here. The review, The Sopranos, Season 3, Episode 8. This one is titled, He is Risen. And by God, did Alfie rise this episode. He did. Ralphie rose from the depths of hell. And Tony's crew to you know, top, one of his top guys. And it was all because someone shat themselves on the toilet. Technically, that would be Rose, I believe. He rose. Or risen. Not Riz. What? Riz? Riz. Who killed Riz? My and MC, it buddy. It might have been Ralphie, brother. But I tell, I think this episode should have been last episode. I don't get why we end on a cliffhanger or Ralph and Tony feuding. And then we had an episode not dedicated to that. For me, this is another classic Sopranos episode where it's just bang average. Yep. I mean, not awful, but not good. Not great. Yeah. I mean, it's middle of the pack. Middle of the road. It's your, it's your classic, just bang average. It's the Sopranos, man. It's in a nutshell. Yes, and um, we're going to just... Consistently average. We're going to just do wee story by story instead of zigzagging right. Meadow and Jackie April Jr., Ecstasy. I thought Meadow was better than Ecstasy, but you know what? Everyone's on the Ecstasy. Everyone's on the ease, damn it. I, I don't really know if this is a good guy, a, a good idea, him giving Tony's daughter ease, but he did anyway. Well, we've seen Chris do it back in season one. It wasn't ease, but... True. That was fucking moronic for Chris, wasn't it? It was. And look what happened to his little buddy. So, um, yeah, no. Um, she gets the ease, she passes it. He has a look down her shirt and then decides, nah, you know what, this ain't worth it. This ain't worth losing my knees. So he just decides to leave the room. He leaves the room. And you know what, right? See the scene later on in the episode where she hijacks his car. To me, that was just forced and cringy. Yeah, she steals his keys, hijacks his car. She swerves it the way she, like, drives off down this little, like, slope that's about four foot. And then everyone rushes over and, and rescues her for the car, and they're all like, oh, you could have died. And it's like, no, you could not have died. <laughs> she was in no danger. All she did was damage the car slightly. I mean, what's the whole fucking point in this? Why did Meadow decide that she was going to hijack his car? Where the fuck was she going to go? She couldn't go without him anyway, so like... I don't, uh, I don't get it. Was it supposed to be some sort of, you know, trick? Like, oh, look, Jackie, I'm playing a wee joke on you. I've stole your car. And then it ended up going tits up because she crashed it or what? I'm not actually too sure. But for me, just fucking fill her. Yeah, don't really care. Like, if, if anything, this made him like her more, when in reality it shouldn't have because he's just fucking totaled her car. Oh, you nearly died as long as you're okay. Yeah, bullshit. Uh, Ralph, Ralphie was still in Tony's bad books at the beginning of the episode. He just, uh, he wouldn't eat He refused a drink. Now, they made this as if, they made it as if Ralphie refusing a drink was like slapping Tony in the face and shiting on his dog or something. Oh, he even though he doesn't have a dog, his ducks. We'll go with ducks. Like, his ducks did make a return. So fucking what? He didn't want to have a drink with Tony. Is that such a criminal act? Like, is this unforgivable? Well, to be fair, what's worse, him not wanting to have a drink or Tony punching him because he, he killed someone? I mean, for me, Ralph. I just don't get. I just don't get the pettiness of everyone. I don't, Ralph thinks because he's the main man, he's untouchable. But you're you're talking about the man. This is the man. Yeah, Tony. I could understand maybe if it was another maid, but even then, what Ralphie done was wrong. How can how can he not accept that he fucking murdered someone? Yeah, who was pregnant nonetheless, and I mean he'd make it as if he was the one hard done by. But because Tony came out and punched. I'm surprised that never got him killed on the spot. What he done? Yeah, I don't get so. Or, or like kicked out the club or something. So, um, or Tony, not the club, but you know, Tony's out. Tony's right hand, Silvio's telling Tony that he did wrong. You got it wrong, Tony. Then, he actually says that you should apologize and maybe make him captain. What the fuck? See, that's why I just don't like this show. I mean, what Ralphie done was wrong, and like people should be sticking to that. But no one, why is no one condemning what he done? I don't get it. But Tony's not exactly sticking to his guns either. He's not. He's not like, you know what? The prick deserved it. He's kind of like humming and hawing about it. He's like, uh, yeah, but aye. Polly suggested whacking him. He's like, he's too much of a good. I don't know. Polly. So yeah, Tony's willing to let morals go out the windy as long as the guy's a good earner. 
Yeah, Ralphie then says that if it was Tony's daughter or like um, niece. Girl, niece or Gumari, he'd understand. Yeah, well, no shit. I, I mean, how does Ralphie, what's Ralphie talk about? Of course. So you try to tell me if Ralphie done this to Meadow, I mean, Tony would let him breathe. It do, I, that doesn't make sense to me, that line. Like, it just does not make any sense whatsoever. Now, unless he was maybe talking in context of like he slapped Tracy a bit and left her at a couple of slaps and it was his daughter. He's talking about killing her, mate. Yeah, I know, but is that not completely ludicrous? Ah, uh, it's, it's nonsense, like... I mean, <laughs> if he did this to Meadow, he's not able to have this conversation. And, and would, he, if would he have been able to whip out the... I'm a made guy, like? I'm a made man. No, a made he, man. no you're a dead man. Um, so, yeah, he has this conversation. His, the new capo, though, the guy that got the capo position instead of Ralphie... Does an Elvis Presley. He dies on the toilet. Dies on the toilet. How the fuck did this happen? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's plot purposes, isn't it? It's like, like a, a, anytime Tony's hit with a difficult decision, something like this happens. Same happened with Richie. Then Janice killed him. Um, and the same here. Yes. He's been dealt with a, a difficult situation and it's been gifted to him on a plate. When are we actually going to get to see Tony deal with these situations himself? Are we going to see him deal with him? So because this guy dies, I mean, I guess we need a new capo now, and Tony decides that he's going to make Ralphie's captain. I mean, Ralphie's celebrating on the same day they've just buried this guy. Isn't this supposed to be like a big family? I don't know. What a shit, isn't it? Would you really be celebrating that on the day of this guy's death? Should we not be mourning him? Ralphie's like, come on, Tony, let's drink with me. But Tony repays the favour, and he's like, well, since you didn't drink with me... I'm no drink with you. He didn't actually say that, but I'm assuming that's kind of the... That's the mindset going on here. Go, so he walks out. And that was pretty much it from that standpoint. We had Tony visit Dr. Malfi, who double booked the appointment. She, there was a, another woman there. She, apparently she's a BMW car dealership Mercedes. woman. Mercedes. Mercedes. So therefore, Tony all of a sudden takes an attraction to this woman and he decides that he's going to buy a Mercedes car just so he can... Speak to her, he's watching like adverts, he sees a Mercedes come on the TV and he's like, says to his wife, hey, I'm going to buy one of those. Carol's like, yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah, just you go and waste 200 pounds, just so you, 200 grand, just so you can fucking try and strike up a conversation with some woman in a skirt. Uh, and that's exactly what Tony does. He goes to the car lot, he says he wants to take it for a test drive. She says, well, you have to have a, you know, a car, a car dealer go with you. So... They go out, they end up in bed. This woman cancels her next appointment with Dr. Melfi. Dr. Melfi hears a man on the phone, and it's Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony jumps into bed, and I think they're in his, like, yacht or whatever. Ducks, are, ducks arrived. They used to take, this is where he used to take the Russian whore, and now he's taking the, the car dealer whore. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, and then we see the the Mercedes parked outside on, like, the uh, the port. So, I mean, Didn't really need to see that. We knew what was happening. To be honest, but that's it. And that was the end of that. I mean, anything else? What I would say is, what what are they doing with Junior? We got a brief scene with Artie, but then Ralphie came in and Artie was told to basically no. But what, what are they doing with Junior? This guy was so prominent in season one, and since then it's just been the old guy. I it's think, almost like you've been as well killing them all. Yeah, I think they should have just killed him along with his right hand man. I mean, like why not? Like what did I? I just doesn't make a lot of sense to me how Tony kind of just forgave Junior. Like, no repercussions, no nothing, just, no, that's it. You can still earn, you can still do this. And it's almost... You can still earn, he's doing nothing, he's just sitting yeah, there. Yeah, but do you know what I think, like, Tony, like, almost, co he's completely forgiven Junior, but whereas he didn't forgive his mum. No, I, I get it, I think Junior's a lot more likeable than Gloria. Gloria's a fucking arsehole. But I just wonder why Tony took the whole shit with Gloria to, his, to her death. I, I think it's more because she manipulated Junior and he kind of thought, no, it actually wasn't Junior that really wanted to do it, it was more her. True. And then he found out at the end, oh, it was her dementia, was it? Oh! My dementia, my ass. Also, the scene with Dr. Melfi complained her psych psychiatrist does nothing for me. If you're a psychiatrist, right, and you need a psychiatrist, should you really be a psychiatrist for your job? Yeah. I'm I mean, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, yeah. Uh, to me, that... To me, that's almost like you're not in the right... Mind frame to be helping people. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. 
And would you agree with this? I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. That's exactly what I was going to give it a 5 out of 10, guys. Just your basic run of the mill. Like, no, I mean, g- not nothing nothing overly bad, but nothing overly good. And The only intriguing storyline here is Ralph against Tony this season. And it's, it's like diffused like that. If I if I had to sum up season 3, it would be 5 out of 10. I'd say that's probably too high. I'd say 4 out of 10. And the Sopranos overall, I'd probably say like 5.5, 6 out of 10. I, I, I'm just not seeing it. This best show of all time. And I, I actually think it's too late. I don't think it might, no matter how good the rest of the show is, I just think it started off so average that I could never consider this the best show of all time. Even if season four, five, and six were like nine, tens, tens I just think the, the first three seasons have been just so average that I could never say, oh, this is like the greatest show ever. Yeah, me too. And what is the direction of season three? I'm not entirely sure. The whole thing is just Ralphie believing that he should have been a capo and he wasn't a capo. Other than, like, Ralphie. I mean, there's three things really going on, I believe, in, in season three. You've got Ralphie, it's beef with Tony. Tony looking out for Jack April's April. son and just, like, Meadow getting up to, like, all sorts of shit at college, getting up to, like, drugs and the new boyfriend and all this crap. That seems to be the three things that they're focusing on. Everything else is irrelevant. I mean, you've got Polly, Sylvie, and Silvio, and they're supposed to be, what, right-hand men. They're supposed to be big characters, you know, important characters for Chris, Tony. this episode, and they ne- sitting on the couch. I mean, they, they never get any storylines of their own. Like, when do we ever see them venture off and have their own shit? We don't. Uh, your Italian guy that Tony brought over, I mean, he'll just disappear. Dis- he'll just disappear. Yep. For episodes at a time. He will. Like, it wasn't in this one. I don't know. I mean, you just compare it to Sons of Anarchy. It's like everyone at the club had something going on. There's just no stories. Like, There's... the stories in this show are dead. Like, what? You need, a, you need a main story arc and there's fucking nothing. I just don't know how someone could go, oh, I, I love Silvio. I love no, Polly. The, the, where's, like, forget about internal beefs. Where's the beef with outsiders? No, but seeing this show, I think it's borderline impossible for your favourite character to be anyone other than Tony. Yeah, I agree. Because the whole show revolves around Tony. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what it is, guys. It's Ducks made a return as well, but who cares? It's only Ducks. Quack, quack. That's it. Till next time. Peace. Five out of ten.